Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be building a DIY Enigma machine out of a Pringles tube. If you haven't already, go check out my video on ciphers and encryption. In that video, I go over the history of the Enigma machine in World War II, as well as other ciphers that have been used over time. All right, so I've got here a Pringles tube and these two sheets, which are going to make our Enigma machine. I'll leave a link to these in the description below and be sure if you're printing them out to print them at 100%, even if it doesn't all fit on the paper, because otherwise it won't completely go around the can. So once you've cut it out, you'll see um, a couple reflectors, a couple rotors, rings, and one input output. So for the purposes of this, we only need one reflector, so I'm just gonna use reflector B, um, and we only need three rotors, so I'm just gonna use rotors one, two, and three. And the rings, I'll come back to those at the end, but you don't need them for this step. So what we're gonna do is take the Pringles tube like this, and we're gonna assemble by wrapping each of these rings around here. So we're gonna start with the reflector down at this end and we're just going to tape that down. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to take... I'm just going to put them in order, one, two, three. So we're going to take the rotor one. And we're going to do the same thing there. And remember, it doesn't matter if they're perfectly aligned this way yet because we're always going to be able to just move them back like this. Okay, so here we are with our completed Enigma machine. So what we're just gonna do is here, I'm gonna align each of these. So you wanna make sure that now the input output cylinder is aligned, that that gray bar is aligned with the reflector. And so these here, these rotors can be set to any position you want. So like this. So the way this works is that you're gonna take a letter that you wanna encrypt, say, let's encrypt C, and you're gonna follow its path, this wire. You're gonna follow that all the way down here to O, and then we're gonna go across here from O along the next rotor to G, to G, and then finally we go all the way to S, we follow the reflector, we're gonna to go to X, back to E, down to W, and all the way down to U, down here. Yeah, U. And so that will be our encrypted letter for C. And once you've encrypted your first letter, you're going to want to tick this down by one, this rotor here. And so when this, so you can see here, when, when our gray, when it ticks, so each letter we encrypt, we move this rotor by one. So when it ticks down, when the gray tab here reaches this middle line, that is when we're going to tick this down by one. And then when we finally get back to here, we will tick this down again and again and again. And when this one finally matches up with these, we're gonna tick this final rotor. And you can see from here, we'll just keep taking this one, we get a full revolution, then this, then a full revolution of this, and we'll start ticking that one down. Now you might remember from my last video that I mentioned these machines often have a plug board. And so how this that is represented on this 
is, so let's say we wanted to connect C and D on the plug board. So we're going to write a D here and a C here. So when we're going to try and go and encrypt a C, we're going to see that it's connected to D and we're going to actually follow D's path. And when it comes out to whatever letter, we'll then look at whatever that's connected to on the plug board. So if you want to do some encryption and decryption with your friends, you're going to need to make sure that you're both using the same reflector and the same three rotors in the same order. And if you're using a plug board, you guys want to make sure that you're both using the same plug board settings. And also, you're going to have to make sure that you start on the right settings of the rotors. So in this case, it would be MCT. And that's how we would both start our Enigma machine. Now, I also mentioned at the start about rings. So on the actual Enigma machines, the they could change where um, where the next rotor would start ticking at. So they could actually move where this gray tab was. So on this, that's represented by these rings. So what you can do is put this ring like on top of here and connect it the same way as before. And that will just move where the gray tab is. So that's just changing the ring settings on the Enigma machine. And it might also help to tape this input output and maybe even the reflector down because they should always be staying lined up. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.